Good morning, mamas. This is Cody. Good morning. This is Melanie. Good morning. This is Ashley. Oh, my oh goodness. Lord. And we're missing our friend Fee, who is hey, on Fee. her birthday trip. Ew. Oh, it's Hailey with her boo. Yeah. I have a lot of thoughts that she might come back with new things. Oh, my God. None, none, of, none of nobody's business. No. <laughs> um, but we hexing her. people, girl, because you know you be casting these spells. I know. That's true. I just said new things. Uh-huh. It could be spirit, okay. jewelry, Baby, oh, so no. Oh, oh, my. Oh, my. Ashley, all in this woman's womb. Um, okay, well. <laughs> all up in this woman's womb, though. I just want her to have a baby. <laughs> Ashley wants everyone but her to have a baby. Uh, no, I want That's a baby, That's not too. true. Ashley... Go, Ashley will still have another baby. She I just told Chia she that would. today. I was like, oh, you have 30 more ejaculations. Do you oh. want to make a baby before then? What? Ashley, you are the craziest person I know. I am. I don't, You want me oh, to be a thousand dead. percent honest with you? No, I want another baby. Not really. Oh, Goodbye. It doesn't make any this sense. Com- oh. this, the episode is over. Okay. okay. She mind. shows up pregnant. <laughs> this episode is going to burn in the wind. She's going to be like, I should have never said out loud. Yeah, that part. That part. Oh. Hmm. But about life these days. Ashley, I feel like you will lead this conversation. Oh, I, you know what? I think me and Chia are in a space of like, um, we are constantly in a space of like rediscovery. Do you know what I mean? And I think like recommunicating, mm, yeah. re, re all, all the things of re, re alling. And I think that we've kind of just hit a space of having to be more intentional about our actual relationship versus us parenting mm-hmm. because there is, that parenting is like 99% of our relationship. And that's the thing. I think that's where he gets like misled that everything is great. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly having to remind him, like I'm a whole other person outside of being their mother. Why did Asia, I was doing her hair. Is something on my face? No, (laughs) I just thought about the most. (laughs) This episode is called Ashley's train of thought. (laughs) I was doing Asia's hair. She going to say, mom, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, excuse me? Ooh. And she was like, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I am grown. I, I, I'm grown, baby. And she was like, yeah, but like, you know, when you are not doing being a mom anymore. And mm. I was like, what do you think that I do now? She was like, you're a mom. And then you do your podcast. These are good things, Ashley. Yeah. No, what but do you want I have to a see? whole fucking book deal and I write. And so I was like, what? Have you said that to your children? I, they have my book in the living room that they read all the time. Oh, okay. They think I just made that book for them. Like, that no one else has it. <laughs> I have it. Kaya right. reads it all the time. But a lot of people do. Over 10,000 yes. people have that book. I know because I sold it myself. Yes. So I was like, what? It's beautiful, so, beautiful me. Shout out. <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, I see a mommy works. And she was like, no, but you're just you're just a mom. And it was just the way she said it as if like in her little five year old mind, oh, I wonder what my mom's gonna do with her life, like when she stops being a mother. Like like I have no other existence. But to them, okay, that is our existence. Like, yeah, but it kinda made best. me sad. So I said, What does your dad do? She's like, He works. Mm-hmm. And I was like, But he works from home. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out what she's correlating that's different from him than me. He's yeah. on his computer more than I am. But maybe does he say it more? Does he say I'm working? I no. need you Guess to do who this. Does. You do. I do. Yep. That's why I these do. kids say daddy first. Because we walking around here talking about daddy doing this, daddy doing that, daddy's gone. That part. Mm-hmm. I'm like your dad's on the your dad's having a meeting. Your yes. dad's on the phone. Your yeah. dad's working. Don't bother him. When I'm working, I typically work from my phone to edit, mm-hmm. shoot content, and so he never says, "Hey, your mom is working right now," or da da da. He does this thing where he'll be like, "Leave your mom alone. Mm. Leave her alone. Don't go in the room." Which I tell him not to say because I'm like, "Don't tell my kids to leave me alone." Mm-hmm. You can say to them like, "Hey, she's on a phone call or she's working," so they understand the difference. I never say, "Leave your dad alone." I say because also I want them to have a consciousness. I'm like, "Hey." Hey, he's on the phone stop screaming that's rude mm-hmm. or your dad is working right now what do you need mm-hmm. so there's just a very different like direction that's coming and so they're just associating it with like oh mom's in her room maybe sleeping or watching tv like leave her alone versus i'm actually in there working mm. and so he doesn't use that verbiage so they think i'm just their mom and i'm having a life it actually made me sad i think well the good thing though is that you've identified like how he can help Mm-hmm. right changing language and how you can help too i mean honestly at the end of the day I, I think it's kind of natural for kids to look at their parents as mom and dad and sometimes more one than the other um and but knowing that a like the way you say things can uh, can help that and also like how much you care mm-hmm. i think if you are really passionate about it then you have to like reiterate to them this is what i do 
You know, all these things, all these things mm-hmm. are what I do. Mm-hmm. Cause obviously this bothers you. <laughs> Just a moment. My kids definitely are like, dad makes movies and you help. That's literally <laughs> what Brooks says. No, he doesn't. I mean, now he knows, like over the last year, I feel like he's more aware, mm-hmm. which is why I did that. Remember I did that presentation at his school last year oh, right. mm-hmm. on black love. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, that's what he would say. Wow. Dad yeah. I don't know what the twins would say. Yeah, I, no think it's a, I think it's a, tr- I think too, to the point, what it does is that it triggers us mm-hmm. because I think that even too, no matter how much we do as women and mothers, there's always this feeling like we're, we're not doing enough in either arena. Yeah, we're, like we're always like, it's never enough, you yeah. know? So you have to sacrifice one thing to do the other. And it's funny because I, organically this is coming up and I very much, I think with my son Cameron, I was very much in denial that I was conflicted about being a mother and a a creative artist or a Mm. singer and, you know, doing Mm -hmm. all that. Because I was like, no, I'm doing both. But it's like, how how, how well are you doing both? Mm. And truly, what are you doing more of? And I wanted to, like, call me a stay-at-home mom. What? How (laughs) dare you? Right. (laughs) I have accolades on my shelf. Right. I step, I travel. No, Baby, most of the time you're a stay-at-home mom. Mm. Let's be clear. So I had to come to this realization where I realized, too, to compartmentalize, I think, my role in both arenas, I have I need separation. Yeah. And that's something that was mm. really hard to ac- accept because I didn't want to feel like I was being an absent mother mm-hmm. or, you know, just or or like just too much in in any way. So there's there is this weird thing that I think when our kids point at us as mothers and says well you're just a mom yeah right we feel offended by this yeah but it's like i mean to be honest it's it's our greatest role it's sure. a, it is our greatest job we love it it doesn't mean anything but we, oh! can- what? <laughs> we have in drama to i'm not doing this <laughs> That's the spirit of Felicia. That, she said, you're not going to record with on me. The ancestor <laughs> said, bitch, get to work. <laughs> what, what is, what is today? What is I thought it was a bu- I thought it was a rodent. I didn't know what was happening. Girl, the way I saw that thing flying and the way I responded instead of I telling you to move. Thing. How did it just fall? I don't know, but it how was did like. How it just fall, though, is the question. Oh, this is really going to be an exciting um, episode. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, yes, cute. <laughs> Melanie's like, let me touch this thing. Let me see what's going Maybe on. Maybe should put a book in front of yeah, it. No, know. no, because that will make it more front heavy, like bottom heavy, and then it'll do it yeah. again. Okay. This thing has never failed, though. Never. Well, they did a little, that little duct tape thing yeah. is new, right? Yeah, it's to get the flare off the end of the Is it, did, did we position it back for the flare? Jesus, that is, I don't even Ooh, know what that was This is about. a day, guys. This is a day. And that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Sometimes we have those. Girl, okay, wait. I I don't know if you remember the last thing you said. I but, don't. Well, I will jump in yeah. and we will, it's fine to like keep the chaos yeah. up in this thing. Um, because I what I heard you say too is um, our kids saying like, you're just a mom. I think when anyone says you just something, mm. especially us. Don't like, limit me. Yeah. That, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so I think, to me, in my mind, like it's n- like pretty normal for kids to just see mom and dad. Yeah. But when somebody says you're just a something, it's like, excuse me, child. <laughs> this part. <laughs> Who are you talking to? This part. Right. This part. <laughs> and and I think too that just a mom thing is triggering for moms who have other ambitions and yeah. other career goals, because again, we feel so challenged. I think mm-hmm. at times to be in in both spaces. Yeah. It's like. I want to be seen as a human being. I want Mm -hmm. to be seen as a woman, as a person, as someone who contributes in the world outside of just this house. Mm. And we all are that. So when your kids do just point at you and just, it also reminds you that sometimes you have to be the one to remind them, no, I actually have other things. That's why I, these days, don't feel bad about telling my kids no. Yeah. Like, I'm like, no, I got to go. No, Mm -hmm. I got to, like, sorry, mommy and daddy are going to have to really be working a lot in November. Your auntie's coming to help out. Yeah. Because I got to be gone. Yeah. And I'm okay with that now. I think a few years ago with one child, I was definitely in a space of, like I said, not wanting to be an absent mother, mm-hmm. you know? But I am a human being first. I have my own interests and my own things that I have to do. And again, 
I, my, your children have to see that too. Yeah. You have to show it to them so that they understand it is a part of you. Even if they still call you just a mom, you right. know that you, right. you've shown them and it will click for them. Like Cameron knows that when I leave, I'm going to perform, I'm going to sing, I'm traveling, I'm gone. Yeah. Then I'm gone. Kaya does not know what I do. Right. She, she has like, not seen it girl. yet. But I will say too, sometimes we conflate motherhood with being present mm -hmm. and I know I, I, I would say that we would all agree being present is really important mm -hmm. but like you're still a mom when you're at the office or yeah. when you're recording a song oh yeah you're still I'm like still thinking making about the grocery list all or the things coordinating the child care or whatever and I think a lot of people like get lost in well if I'm not there which again I value like there's things that they so I certainly want to be there yeah, more for sure but we have to give ourselves credit and recognize that like we are still mothering yeah. when we're sitting somewhere else and they are this not in our true. faces. I, I also think about, well, Amira has been on set with me and she was there and she bagged up the books with me when I was selling my books and all of that. Like, mm -hmm. so she's been a part of like all of those things and she's very much so knows, but I also think about something else that she said. So we were talking about, cause she's getting her college degree while she's in high school. Lord. So I know. So we were talking about this with her and she goes, I don't know if I want to do it. And I was like, well, you have to. And she said, you know, I only have my associates. So she was like, um, you don't have your bachelor's degree. Why do I have to have mine? And you said, <sighs> Well, okay. So when I was getting my associates, I remember at my graduation, I looked at Chia and I was sitting in the audience and all I could think about was Chipotle. Mm. And I was like, I'm so hungry. Amir was at my graduation. My dad, all my parents, everybody was so happy. And they're like, okay, now you're going to go get your bachelor's. And I was like, no, I'm not. I told everybody there at my graduation, I was like, no, I'm not. I know I like, I was literally sitting in the audience. Like, this is so dumb. I don't feel special. It doesn't feel important to me. This doesn't feel the way that I thought it would like, oh, you get your degree. I just did not care. Mm -hmm. And I knew in that moment, like, I don't care about having my bachelor's degree. It's not important to me. I'm very clear that I, what I want to do, I want to make children's books. I want to write, like, I'm gonna do it. And I told everybody on my graduation dinner, I was like, I'm not going back. And everybody was like, oh, well, they know me. So once I say something, it's been written. Oh. <laughs> but I told Chia, I said, you know what? One day, Amira is going to be like, my dad has his degree or bachelor's degree and my mom doesn't, mm -hmm. which is why I got my associates. I was like, I have to have something, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and I told him, I was like, it's going to come back to bite me. I know it is. And in this, in this moment, it was exactly what I knew would happen. One day my child was going to be like, why are you trying to make me do something that you didn't do? So it's just, I think even her, it, this all happened within the same week. So Asia says that Amira says that to me. And I was trying, and I told him, I was like, I think I'm gonna just go back to school and get it just because. And he was like, why would you do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I could get it, go to film school. Like, it doesn't matter. There's still things that I could do. I was like, I could gain more knowledge. It's not going to hurt me to go to school for film school or something. I could still learn more things that could help me with my career. So it's not like this is a negative thing or a waste of time. I'm holding you know what this I mean? question. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, go. Go ask. Why does she have to get her bachelor's in your mind? So it's not, there is a spider crawling on that. Mm -hmm. I don't it's know what the hell baby. is happening, it's but it's just, baby. there's just a it's lot Halloween. happening around <laughs> Jesus. I'm just waiting for it to jump down on you. Um, it's not going to. Okay, those little ones hop. When it gets lit, when not it gets, those little when ones it gets hop. lower, I'll, what breed is this? <laughs> we have spiders lower, at our house. I will, I will refree it. Okay, thank you. Why does she have to get her bachelor's? Because I feel like, well, number one, by the time they graduate, college degrees probably aren't even going to matter. Mind you, when I was in Ohio, I was sitting at the table with all of my friends. I they're like half and half, right? Half of them, I know they graduated from college because I was at their graduation. The other half, I assumed mm -hmm. graduated from college because we were in college together. But then I got pregnant and left. So it was kind of like, I don't know what the hell they were doing. I was in my own world. And this half of the table makes more money than the other half. Sure. So that all of my friends who don't have a college degree make more money than my friends who do. Oh, that half. Yes, that half. <laughs> they all have really amazing careers, make over six figures, and they're actually all single women. So the half that are married with college degrees make less. And so I'm like. That's because they got kids. I don't know. <laughs> and or someone that they depend on. So maybe they made different choices. Yes. But, but again, yes. why does Amira have to get a bachelor's? So I don't know because that's what I was trying to think about. I'm like, 
I don't know. I'm just, I, I don't know. I don't even have an answer. I just want her to mm. have it in case, maybe because of like me, um, being a creative is really hard. And you know, this is like, you have to have a certain level of grind and willingness, willingness to be broke at times, willingness to not have certain things you want, willingness to give up certain things to have the things that you deem important to you. Like for me, there's a lot that I have not had up until this moment, but I was fine with like, I also am married and have been with mm -hmm. someone who has been the financial provider mm -hmm. in my relationship. Yeah. Which is what I was saying about your friends. Right? Yes. That might be the case. Is Could that, be. At a certain yes. point, it was like, this is what we got and we're right. okay with it. I, but I also don't want her to have some of the burdens that I had. You know what I mean? I, there was a lot of me relying on Chia in a way that I wouldn't want my daughters to have to rely on a man. There was mm -hmm. a lot of sacrifices that I had to make because he had more money mm -hmm. and I couldn't make certain decisions for myself because I didn't have the money to. And I don't want that from them. So I feel like... I would rather them do like what Chia is doing. Chia has always been creative, but he's always kept his day job. Mm -hmm. And that day job has provided us a 401k, health insurance, all of these things. But he also has, you know, managed music artists and done all of these things that have been ebbed and flowed. So I would want her to be able to, if she has to work a day job while she's still trying to act or still trying mm -hmm. to do whatever, she has the ability to move up and make more money while she's being creative. I have lots of thoughts. Okay, share all of your thoughts. Because this is something I've thought. Not Melanie looking at the spider. <laughs> I just want to make sure it wasn't, you know, I, I got to be on standby. Y'all got me because I'm not going to. I got okay. you. He's not jumping on you. He, so, he went back up to the top. This <laughs> is something I've thought about, like, a lot. I don't, you know, I think for me, I have accepted that, like, I don't think a college degree means what it used to. It doesn't. Right? I, I even, and I think that's changed even from we, when I was in school, graduated in 2005 to like now. Like and she's so wearing a Howard sweater, changed. by the way. Right, I'm wearing my Howard sweater. <laughs> and a jacket that I got says two degrees <laughs> Black to, to Tommy's one, and he's still got more. Uh, I mean, he's still more the provider, but yes, I See? am wearing my HBCU jacket. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying. I got two. He got one. What that mean? No, I know. And he makes more. So that's. So, but, but here's, and he's, he's almost even more the reason why. But so for me, I think that number one, so many more jobs, roles, opportunities, professions exist now than ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And don't require a college degree. Mm -hmm. um, but they do require discipline. They do require like learning. Mm -hmm. You got to learn via books, via whatever. Some people, YouTube University. I'm not saying that these are like foolproof ways to be successful, but I'm yeah. saying that with the right amount of discipline and dedication, you can be successful, like mm -hmm. very successful. Yeah, for sure. Of, you know, we all know the the big names of folks who don't have college degrees, aka Diddy, and and then some. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm I'm definitely like a if my child were to come to me and say like I don't want to go to college, as long as there's a plan, 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 right, and I understand that discipline and yada yada yada. Like I I feel like it's fine. This yeah, me personally, for sure. Um, in addition to like, sure, you got to know who the kid is. You right. got to, you know, what I'm saying. So there's still a certain amount of control there because yeah. ultimately they're going to do what they want. Mm -hmm. But um, to me, it's fine. Yeah. And I think that what I feel like I learned from college is that a degree is more of a, sh a, a ability to show a job, a potential employer, your dedication mm -hmm. to um, to learning something. Yeah. That four years is a box checked. Oh, they're willing to work hard yeah. to, you know, you can do that to excel. And you that's can, all it is because yeah. what most people major in ain't what they end oh, up doing. No, no, none of them. I it's, have literally yeah, like unless only you're, one unless person. You're, <laughs> unless you're studying to like your medicine. Yes. Yes. Ball. I need you yes. to go to school. Special, I need you to know how to do <laughs> please that. Go to school. <laughs> please go to school. <laughs> Absolutely. Please go. Do not go to YouTube University no. for yes, my surgery, please. Although, Thank you. <laughs> Oh, although many do um, yeah, no I was gonna say although even some doctors they've been to school and they still are dumb and don't know much well, and you have to tell them things that you learned on YouTube like actually there is something wrong with me and it's not what you thought it was so mm -hmm. there's that but as you were I'm sorry I'm curious what you think about oh me I mean I'm both Jared and I are we, we are we're both college graduates mm -hmm. Jared is Jared actually took um music management or business mm -hmm. business music. Oh, well, his I degree so works he, with his It's career. actually yes. working with Go his career. Jared. Yeah, <laughs> but, before, but this is only now. Prior to this, Jared was an artist. He was a creative. Yeah. He was a songwriter. Oh, yeah. He was behind the scenes. He was on television. It was like none of that there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I see him write a contract and crunch numbers, I'm like, ooh, baby, that's so sexy. <laughs> because I know that's that college degree coming in. Yeah. Me personally, I went to college for accounting and finance. What? What? Yeah. No, you did not. Oh, absolutely I did. Why? Yes. What? Well, be, well, be, okay. So here's the backstory for me. I went to college for accounting and finance. My dad was a financial advisor. Uh -huh. So my plan was always like, Hey, look, I'm gonna pursue music, yeah. but if I got to take over this book, I yes. can. Yeah. I love it. But then 
I had to do like a co-op work program with a, like a country with a company in Canada. And at that point I was already traveling back and forth to do music. So mm. I had to switch and just go into business, general business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what I graduated with in the end. And I got it, but like, it doesn't have, have you ever do you like yeah does it do anything for you right now <laughs> does nothing for me and the the great well the thing is i think my i think my and again when i when i came out of high school i didn't go to college right away because i was pursuing music and i had to this was a huge conversation in my house because my mom was like what and my dad was like go for it <laughs> like yeah 100 percent. I mean, my dad was like listen you just have a plan yeah so i was doing music in canada so i was you know figuring out all that but I made the decision when music kind of slowed down with what I was doing. I was like, all right, I'm going back to school. And so the plan was the plan. So again, accounting and finance to business. Mm -hmm. I never walked to get my diploma ever. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought about that one day. It like came to the house. I was going through an old book <laughs> and I found the, my, my diploma and I was like, oh, I was like, damn, I never, I never walked. I never graduated. My parents never, I didn't graduate high school Yeah, and I did not graduate You didn't college. have a ceremony. I am I didn't throw walk. you a graduation party. I did not walk for any of these Do things. you want a graduation no, party? No, I don't. But, uh, yes, you do. Because, no, because here's the thing. I got sad for a second and after I was just like, oh no, but my parents saw me walk to get Grammys. So oh, it's fine. Okay. Hey, there you, you know, go. We can't recreate which, that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> which, which to me is like the flex of like the <laughs> destiny of my life. Yes, that's yeah. true. You know, and so as good of a student as I was, because I was always a good student, mm -hmm. to that point, I think that's actually what education and yeah. that journey yeah. gave me it's like yeah. I knew the discipline of what it was when we moved from the city to the suburbs and I was one of the only people of color that went to the school literally mm -hmm. five of us I remembered hating every second of my life until something clicked and I realized oh you can be dropped off anywhere and be good mm. and it taught yeah. me that experience and then going to college and then going back and forth between LA and Toronto and living like this double life from studying accounting and then going into ditty parties it's like it so was crazy riveting to me <laughs> it's a riveting life i will oh go ahead no but i was just saying is like that actually is what i think school taught me yeah. and like my ability to adapt yeah. and be yeah. able to maneuver and change i think is actually what prepared mm -hmm. me for my life now yeah that's what i was gonna say uh, to a certain extent i think what i what i would add is that it's school going to college can be the beginning of independence for a lot of people. Some folks are sheltered at home until mm -hmm. they're 18 and then, you know, and so it can be the beginning of living on your own or or having to meet new people that you didn't grow yeah. up with. Like there's so many new experiences that come with that. So, but again, that doesn't mean you're going to be successful professionally forever, but it, it these are experiences that contribute to who we are, who we become. Yeah. And so, I, like I said, I'm I'm okay in either direction as far as my kids are. I yeah. just want it to be like for a reason, for a plan, not just I, like I, don't want to. I am too. I'm not going to the, the re, that's the reason why I like the program that she's in now because mm -hmm. she's doing it in high school. That way it's like if she just gets these general education classes out the way plus she's intelligent enough to do it. So more so I'm also teaching her just like when I went to cuz I had a meeting with her counselor yesterday to talk about it, talk about the plan, like are we just going to do an associates? Are we going to do a bachelor's? Like how does that work out? Mm -hmm. And she was just like, you know what? I would encourage her to just keep doing the program because she's the only student that finished yeah. the whole first section. She was like, so everyone's still on one. She was like, Amira can finish three. Like they're done by sections. There's 20 of them for them to get their associates. She was like, she could finish three by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And she was like, and every time they finish it, it gives them a letter grade boost. So she has like three A's and a B right now. She was like, so taking these two extra <clears throat> college courses will have her grades. Like she's getting graded for six classes. Mm -hmm. So she'll have four A's and a B instead of three A's and a B, which pushes her GPA up higher. She was like, so this doesn't hurt her. And she was like, and honestly, like she's learning more. She's going to be taking college biology in January. She was like, she has to take it anyway. So you might yeah. as well just have her do it. For me, I just know Amira, since she's been like four, has been adamant she's never going to college and she wants to go to Paris. This has never changed. Like when I graduate, I'm going to Paris. I'm going to do art. I'm going to act. Like Aww. this is, she's always been an artist her whole life and yeah. it's never changed. So, well, that's nice. It's yeah. consistent. I wouldn't make, when she gets to be 18, I'm going to support whatever she wants to do. But I think that also allowing her to just have that just in case. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was never going to have children. That was not even something I ever wanted or thought about. So you just never know at 14 yeah. what will happen to your life when you're 18, 20. I want her to be able to have all the things. Mm -hmm. But none of my kids, I'm not going to make them do anything. I'm going to support whatever they do because they are they don't belong to me. I belong to them. But girl, uh, <laughs> 30 minutes ago, you were going to go get a, a bachelor's just to tell Amir because she should I too. just don't like, that was just my pride. I just don't like somebody <laughs> telling me, like trying to like shit on me a little bit. Like, you don't got one. Then I'd be like, yeah, I do. So I just, Hilarious. it was just more for argument's sake. <laughs> 
<laughs> for argument's sake. Yeah, no, it's not pride. Say, it's it's just my pride. Don't tell me that I'll go. I will go be a doctor just because somebody tried to tell me, you don't have your degree. Well, yes, actually I do. But she had said, he was like, I think you should go back for psychology. He was like, you really need to be a therapist. And he was like, you already do this every day and nobody pays you. Why don't you just get paid for it? And I was like, hmm. No. Maybe I, I, listen, I will. I listened to the mom's den. And the last time we talked about this, you were like, I couldn't be a therapist. I, I was told him that. Patients. Yes, because I could. I was like, I need a one, one off session. I would be like, the only therapist. You got one time with me. If you don't you listen to me, it's over. If you don't listen to me, it's over. It's over. <laughs> Next clientele. <laughs> Actually, the one first and, session is very expensive. Yes, yeah, one and done. Thousand dollars a session. If you listen to me, it'll change your life. Oh man, I, def- I definitely think back. Okay, I'll ask you guys. If you think about your youngest self, mm-hmm. do you feel like you are fulfilling her vision of you as an mm-hmm. adult? Um, yes and no, but but I know for sure that I'm fulfilling my destiny. That I, I've always known. And what do you think that is? Like, what would you define that I as? I would say that I know why I was put on this earth is to be a healer through my words and through writing. And so I actually, a long time ago, like, was clear on who I was and what my gift was. Do you know what I mean? I, so I feel, I feel good about that. Mm-hmm. I know that, like, I might not always make a ton of money from it, or maybe I will, who knows. But I think the moment I realized, like, what I'm here for as long as I do that I feel really good do you know what I mean and I feel really purposeful and I'm um like that's a like a clarity for me like Mm. I know what I was put on this earth for and I'm living in that and maybe I might have to get another job but as long as I do that I feel really good and I feel there is another spider girl you see that one it's so small Ashley it's over there on the wall Maybe I have a arachnophobia. What is it called? Arachnophobia. Remember that movie? Anyway. Yes. Yeah. And just Cody, what about you? Um, oh, am I living my, my childhood dreams? Yeah. yeah. That's essentially the question. Do you feel like if you think about like four-year-old Cody? Yeah. Um, Who was she? So my answer <laughs> is that I don't remember like exactly what I wanted to do. I mean, when I was young, I, I was I was an actor. Like I did theater mm. and then I was on a TV show. And then when I was <laughs> so 12, crazy I know. <laughs> When I was 12, I had to make the decision because I also played sports between sports and acting. Mm-hmm. Don't make that face like you didn't know that. I know. Put but your little eyebrows back down. <laughs> <laughs> Put your little eyebrows back down underneath your brim. <laughs> well, I ran track and I played volleyball and basketball. And, you, um, so <laughs> and I had to choose between the two because they just were very time consuming. Mm-hmm. And so I chose sports. Um, and so I've always been creative, but. And, and so it's manifested itself in different ways, mm-hmm. like as I've gotten older, but I would say like the through line in my life and like my family and like the people that I come from is like doing something to help our community. Mm-hmm. And so that hasn't changed. Like, mm-hmm. that's the thing that like, I don't know that I ever knew exactly what I would be doing. I knew it was going to be some kind of creative and business, um, but that it would be very like, uh, ad- like it would be impactful for the black community. That would be my intention to like positively impact the black community. Look at your and husband. So, yes, my husband is making faces. Hold on, I'm literally blocking the light from the door. Him. Change the whole lighting. <laughs> Hilarious. So for me, I'm definitely doing that. Um, and um, yeah, so I think my my four year old self is is proud, but I also think change gonna come. Mm. Yeah, I think there's a lot. I'm tired. I am. I'm tired. And I, and I, I've also always wanted to be a mom, like period. Yeah. And so figuring out how to like really lean into all the things that I love and be happy and at peace Mm. that is yet to come. And so I've got to figure out what is this, what is, what does the balance look like for me? Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's interesting that you said you chose sports overacting but it seems like the creative chose you regardless and so I think yeah I think that's important because that's where I was coming from like you know like I wanted to be a ballet dancer and then a journalist Mm -hmm. and so in some ways I feel like I still am like the hood journalist you know what I mean like we're still (laughs) sharing information whether it's through podcasts whether it's through my page and I feel like your destiny still chooses you in a way. Yeah. And when you lean into that, I think there's a lot more peace. It's also just understanding, like, that's why The Alchemist is literally my probably top favorite book ever. Damn. And I reread it. Mm-hmm. I'm rereading it right now yeah. because it really just talks about, like, living in your purpose and how you can have many things. Yeah. But when you get 
distracted, they take you away from your purpose. And then once you're living in your purpose, how much peace there is in that. And like, I think for you, you are living in your purpose. You literally help so many people. My purpose is trying me, but carry on. <laughs> I know, I know, but you, you have, I feel like you have in one way fulfilled your destiny and now you've like gotten to the top of that mountain and you're going down and going to the next thing because mm. Lauren Hill said that she's like, you know, you go up and you reach something, you go back down. Yeah. There, it's not just one that's mountain. Fair. You just master something, go down, master something else throughout you your life. Plateau. Yeah. And that's Ooh, a beautiful that's thing. That. I want a rocket ship. Uh, <laughs> I ain't trying to go back down. Fair. I'm trying to just keep going. No, fair. to another one. But you're mean like, no, up, 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 up. Well, the re yeah. and, and no, I absolutely know what you're saying. And mm -hmm. I yeah. agree. It's interesting <laughs> because I had a revelation at this point in my life after turning 40 that I was like, Everybody's like, you know, I kept calling it act two. It's like, this is act two. It's like, mm -hmm. what do I want to do with the next 40 years of my life, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think about that and I didn't see going down. Like I didn't see getting to the top of this mountain mm -hmm. and like going down again. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, where's my where's my spaceship? Where's Ooh. my helicopter? Like, yeah. oh, we now go into the stars. Because I feel that the, the trajectory that I've been on and learning the things in my life that have pushed me to this place now is that I just truly believe that Everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So even if there's some turbulence in my rocket ship on the way to the stars, that's okay. Yeah. I don't I don't envision my mountain going back down anymore. It mm -hmm. just opens up to a new reality of, of space. And yeah. and I think about how I used to consider life in peaks and valleys. And yes, of course, like things are good, things are bad. Who's to say? I don't mm -hmm. know. It's perspective. Mm -hmm. But I really do to bring it back to like what I asked you guys is that I know for sure I am exactly who my four year old self mm, said. That's beautiful. Be. Yeah. I said I wanted to be a singing nurse, period. <laughs> four years old. That's what I said I wanted to be. Made no damn sense my whole life. This was always a running joke in the family. Yeah. What the hell is a singing nurse? She knew mm -hmm. because now the only things that make me feel lit, like I am alive and most myself is when I am singing, creating music. And I am healing. Yeah. And that is, I have known that has been my purpose from a small child, whether I've, I too played sports, yeah. you know, and then I was in college and then I had to get to a point where I was like, oh, I'm going to go, am I going to play college, you right. know, sports? No, I'm not. I'm going to actually pursue music now that I'm out of high school. Yeah. And so all of these things is that I, and I always use this analogy and I love to share this with people because I always have to remind people like when you figure out like, oh, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know. I don't know. I always encourage people to try to remember who they are at that place. That's mm -hmm. like the youngest version of yourself where you felt the most free, the most confident, the most yourself. It could be a memory. It could be a space, a place, a time, a feeling. I don't care. Find it. Mm -hmm. And then when you go through your life, there will always be, um, you know, like if you imagine life as a straight path, which is not, we veer, we go zigzag off the path, but there's always this like connection back to that straight line back to that person and that version of yourself. And I feel that in my life, every time I've ever felt the most myself, the most ignited, the most on purpose and in purpose is when I feel connected back to her. Yeah. And so that's my, that's my visual. So all that like inner, this thing we hear about inner child work and all these things, it's like really, really important. I think for women, especially mm -hmm. to, to find that. Cause I think we are born with the gift of knowing who we are. Yeah, I, that was a I think we can become many versions of that, mm -hmm. but I think truly it's there. And now too, that I have a daughter, I am seeing who she is. Yep. And I'm like, Oh, this <laughs> is you. Mm -hmm. This is you. I don't know what it's going to become as far as, title professional whatever but if you you know like if you ask my parents if i'm being who they thought i would be mm -hmm. 1, yeah. one thousand percent i am one thousand percent not a question in yeah in and i know that's not the same for everybody but that's that's that makes me feel accomplished alone to yeah. your point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether you make a lot of money whether you don't whether it becomes your ceo professional whatever it is i think knowing that is what success is for me that's how i define it same yeah. is are you are you living in, in true your, spirit yep. and on your purpose and yep. in your purpose i have one question yeah oh you do too uh, no go um was there ever a time that you felt off that course or maybe you weren't sure if you were going the right way or doing the right thing um no mm. no were there times when i felt like i wanted to leave it because it was hard mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. 
Did I feel challenged and compromised because of what I had experienced on the journey? Yes. Mm -hmm. But did I always know that it had to be in some form of healing mm -hmm. and word and offer creative offering? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mm -hmm. always knew it had to come back to this. So whether if I had put a microphone down and said, I'm never going to sing again, mm -hmm. I always knew that Melly Belly, I always knew that there was going to be other avenues for me to be able to share got it, got my it. gifting, okay. yep. whether it was not like Melanie Fiona, right. the singer. Yeah. So I always knew that there was going to be another way that would never stop. But I'll be honest with you. I am looking forward to the day when all I do is nothing. Mm. Mm. I, oh, absolutely. Nothing is my favorite thing. To do. <laughs> and still get paid. And still get paid. Just know that the money is taken care of. My children are good. Yep. I can yeah. be present. I can eat well. I can cuddle with my man. Yep. My children can see the world. Um, and we are content in what that is. And there's no demand for me to have to do yep. anything just to provide for a life. So that's why I'm saying like nothing. If I show up, I want to show up because I want to, yeah. not because I have to. Listen. And so like I, that nothing, when I tell you I could do nothing all day, all night, oh yeah. my God, I could. Yeah. I love being still. I, lo I love it. Some people, you know, they have to stay busy. And shout out to Fee because we were talking about this struggle, you know. Um, I, I could do nothing. I could do nothing Same. and be just okay. fine. Me too. To you know, that. I'm always like, my dream would be to like move to another country with my family and come back like once a year and make a movie or do a book. And Find then, me there, sis. Like, Drop me the pen. Let me work for like three to four months and the rest of the, and, But it's just like impactful things. Yes. Like I don't want to work the rest of my life. I want to continue to create. I want to continue to share. Yes. But work... No, that's not something I want to always create and make money for my creations. But I think the word there, right? Like mm -hmm. you're going to do the, you're going to create and you're going to make money, which is work, work. right? Is It's working, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. But you know what? I don't even look, that's the thing. I don't look at it as working. Like mm -hmm. I look at influencing as working because it's a means to make money, but it's not, it's not, I mean, there's parts of it that are part of like who I am but not really do you know but, what I mean but I don't look at I don't know I would disagree I think that the beautiful thing about you is, is that you've actually built your influencer brand on who you are yeah. a thousand you're percent you're not out yeah. here pretending to be something that you're not no, for the but sake of a check you I know? think promoting other brands is not that's not my life's work that's the part of it that is work when I'm having to like create content around promoting a brand or a company mm -hmm. or you know laundry detergent or whatever like these are things that I use in my everyday life so I don't mind mm -hmm. because I love to share with people the mm -hmm. things that I use that are part of my everyday life but what I'm saying is like I write all the time I have like 15,000 children's books that I've written like within this year 15,000 not really that's a lot <laughs> I almost said that. where probably, do you have the time Ashley <laughs> I write them this is what I'm saying I I, I know I'm supposed to be a writer. Like this is not the you're other not day. To be, yeah, I, I mean, are. do you know what I mean? Like, yes. well, I know I'm supposed to be getting paid for you're that. You're supposed to be doing exactly yeah. what you're doing. But the other day, our was Asia was doing something, and I was like, oh my god, this is a this this like how I talked to her and what I said to her. I was like, this is a perfect children's book. Like this needs to be written. And we were going out to eat, and I was like, hold on, Chia. I wrote the whole book, came into the restaurant, read it to my family, and they were like. <laughs> But this is how I write. When I wrote Beautiful Me, I woke up in the middle of the night. I wrote it. Like, I know my gift. I'm, I, I figured know it out. my gift. I got it. What? Mm -hmm. Move to the island. Take your 15,000 books. <laughs> publish, them, <laughs> publish them every six months. <laughs> and then that way your works is creating your money. And you don't got to be there since you got all these. I'm, I'm being I really dead I don't serious. have 15,000 no, books. No, but, okay. but what I'm saying is. As long is as there's like 12. Yeah, yeah, there are. Girl, there, there could are. be six. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I have Kay? six books. So this is what I'm saying. Like, I really do. Like, there. I, yes. Yeah. Listen. I, oh, before we go, because I know this is like the longest episode ever. But there's this girl, Christina Bright. Um, I I posted, I've, I I've always been it. her friend on IG. We're like IG friends for uh -huh. the longest time. She picked up and moved to Mexico. And at first I was like, oh my God, because she, you know, left her son with her, his father. And she was like, you know, she still sees her son, but she moved primarily right. to Mexico, gave up everything. And even when she was doing her video, you always hear this, but I think seeing it in action and she was like, you have, in order to get what you want, you have to be willing to give up everything mm -hmm. that you don't. And that's the problem mm. why people never get what they want because yeah. they're not. She gave up everything mm -hmm. and restarted her life. And she's so happy mm -hmm. and she feels so fulfilled. And she lives in Mexico and she's just creating. She was like, even taking care of her body feels different. Like, it's just like an honor to her. Like, yes, I'll get up and take a walk. Yes, I'll eat fruit. Yes, I'll eat. Because that could not exist when she was in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And so just seeing that it was a constant, like, I almost cried watching her video this morning. And I reposted it in my stories because I was like, 
there's always reminders. Do you know what I mean? I think when you're always in question of who you are, God always talks to you or whatever you believe in. I believe in God. And I feel like God always talks to me whenever I'm in question. And because I'm always listening, I always see those messages mm-hmm. that continuously push me towards, and it's because I want to listen. I'm always yeah. open. Like, please talk to me. I'm here. I'm paying attention. You know, when you know that full alignment, like what's in your mind, what's in your heart. And sometimes you need that extra push visually. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yes, I knew. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think for you, Cody, t- to me, I just feel like there is a separation for you. I think once you step into the realization that you are living in your purpose, how you manage that will be just different for you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? No, when you... but I'm ready. <laughs> no. I'm ready to know exactly what you mean. I mean, like you are living in your purpose. Yes. I think you I have believe to decide that. what is the most important thing to you. Mm, yeah. That's what you have to decide. I already know that. I feel like Mel already knows that. I think you haven't either you do know or you haven't come to terms with it yet. Mm-hmm. Once you make that decision, I think everything will be a lot easier for you. Okay. I think sometimes you're just living in what you think you're supposed to be doing what you know you should be doing. And then there's like a battle between the two. I, I was always comfortable. Like I might have to be a little poor, but I, I but I'm okay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I'm okay with that. Right. Like I knew what kind of lifestyle I was going to have, what kind of mother I was going to be. And I've always been like, I know what that means for me and what it means that I won't have. And a lot of people just aren't, aren't there yet. Yeah. You'll get there. And it could change. Yes. Yeah. And it could change. Yeah. Like it, at 50, you could wake up and just be like, there it is. <laughs> Maybe at 40. Hey. Maybe at 40. Wait, are you 40 as of this episode? No. Yet? Wait. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, this will be. Halloween. Ho- Halloween. Yay. So on this the way. The- tomorrow. Yeah. On the way. <laughs> She'll be 40 tomorrow. She will be 40 tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, that was great, guys. Yeah, that was really good. I don't even know how it started. It started about marriage it, and it yeah, started about it identity. It, it, it started, started about, about us talking about people who were getting on our nerves. Yeah. And Lucky how Amira you. said, Ashley, <laughs> off on the path to go get a bachelor's. So you, I got him. My son got on my nerves so bad last night. I sent him to bed early. Ooh. Yes, God. Mm-mm-mm. Child. Well, that was great, guys. I appreciate you. Yeah. You're welcome. We love the kids. We love everyone here. Yeah. <laughs> we, love all, we love everything. We love life. Yeah. We Have love a you, great Chia. day, mama. Have a great day, mamas. You Bye. are just a mom and more. <laughs>